that one today. <laughs> well, I liked it. Laura Engels Wilder is a saint. All the things her family went through, I just couldn't put it down. Well, I hate to be a naysayer, but frankly, I found it tedious. I mean, first of all, Pa sells the little house in the big woods. Big mistake. And then the whole covered wagon bit. I'm like, let's move on, people. Mm, I found that level. Well, you know, at least in the TV show, they had Nellie Olson, But she doesn't even show up until book four. Without her, it's like, it's like Laura doesn't even have a personality. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The little house on the prairie is not worth the paper it's printed on. <laughs> Janet. Honey, your red flag is showing. Oh. My bad. Okay, um, let's see. Where were we? Hey, welcome to Eagle Brook Church. We are so glad that you decided to join us this weekend. We realize that a lot of you and all of us are getting ready for Thanksgiving holidays, and maybe you decided to come to church to get ready for those specific people that are going to be coming to your house. And so you said, let me go to church first so I can get ready for them. That's why we are kicking off a brand new series today called Your Red Flag is Showing. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at some of the red flags that can pop up in our lives that are first, difficult to see, and secondly, difficult to to deal with. When it comes to red flags, here's the superpower we all have. We can see them in other people. We can see them in our boss. We can see them in our coworkers. We can see them in our spouses. We can see them in our kids. We can see them in our classmates. We can see them in government officials. We often see them the most with someone our friends want to date. We really see them and our in-laws we're getting ready to sit with, like you can see, man, they're the ones that have the issues. But here's what's interesting. Our in-laws can see ours too because they have the same superpower as us. But the number one place that is the most difficult to see red flags is in the mirror, in this series. Here's what I, I want us all to just commit to together that we will be willing to take a hard look in the mirror and be honest about some of the things that are in us that could perhaps be holding us back. Because the temptation that all of us will have over the next few weeks as we talk about different red flags is we may listen or we may watch and think, oh, this is the perfect message for, and we're going to fill in the blank with somebody else. But what I want us to do is, to, is it, it, where I think we should start is by going, you know what? I think this is the perfect message for me. The very first red flag that we are going to talk about is anger, is anger. You know, it's interesting uh, when John, Jason, and I, when we converse about different series and who's going to kick it off and who's going to take different subjects, they were like, hey, Ryan, you got anger. I go, what you mean I got anger? I go, oh, you mean you want me to take anger? Okay, that's cool. All right, so, so we're going to kick it off with, with anger, and, and that's cool. And I'm thinking, man, I don't really like, I'm not really an angry person. And then, but, but you know what? The more and more I started thinking about it, I go, you know what? Man, there's a, there's a little bit in me that's going, Ryan, I, I think you might have a little, a little bit of anger that you really need to to address. In, in, in fact, this weekend, my Instagram account got hacked. They stole the email. They changed the phone number and started messaging thousands of people asking them for $500. Like this weekend, I'm angry right now. And I'm just sitting here thinking like, what a perfect time for us to talk about this. Because this, just so you know, this weekend is not the message of going, hey, you got anger issues you need to deal with. No, no, no. I wrote this message for me, okay? I wrote it for somebody that's going, you know what? Sometimes I just get a little bit angry. And here's the deal. I talked to a lot of people this week. You want to know what the common denominator of every single person I talked to this week? They were all angry about something. Every single person. And I can tell you, I can point to different places where, I can, where, I can, where you can find angry people. One place you could definitely find angry people this week is Ticketmaster. 
There are some Taylor Swift fans in this room watching right now that showed up here and didn't even sing a song. They were just so upset. just like, I cannot believe Ticketmaster would do this. And I couldn't get my Taylor Swift tickets. And people were angry. And a lot of times where people take their anger is where? Facebook. And they go to Facebook. And again, if you don't think people are angry, just, just log on. Just, for, just, just keep scrolling. I promise you, you will find an angry Person, if you don't think people are angry on Facebook, just I dare you to post, who did y'all vote for? And just see what happens, okay? <laughs> just test the waters. Just if you just want to fire up the grill this weekend, like I just dare you to try it out. You want to know where else people are really angry? The airport. If you are traveling for the holidays over the next couple of months, prepare yourself right now because it starts with TSA. These people are never in a good mood because they're yelling at adults all day long and they don't follow instructions. We need you to take all your liquids out the bag. The guy's like, I don't have any liquids in my bag. And they pull out a two liter of Coke. They go, sir, you have liquids in your bag. And then it just starts from there. Like, and then a, a plane is delayed and people are like, oh man, it's delayed. They're like, it's delayed because of weather. They want you to fly in a tornado. You're like, no, actually I don't want to do that. Take your time, sir. It's like, People just get crazy at the airport. In fact, there is a viral video of the Minneapolis airport of a brawl that broke out. I'm like, what is going on with people at the airport? So if you're traveling, just know you're entering into a dangerous zone for sure. Another place where people get angry, first snow. Listen, Minnesotans were always shocked, right? The first, what is this? Is this snow? Who did this? Like, like, you've lived here for 20 years, okay? Like, what did you think was going to happen? Nevertheless, there's anger. Now, if you want to find a community of people who gather together every weekend to get mad at each other, just go to any sports complex in the state of Minnesota, okay? This is where our anger issues come out at a high level. Level. This is the part of the message where I'm just going to talk to myself as a parent. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot believe how angry I get at my son's basketball games. Like, I'm, I literally have to talk to myself. I be yelling at the coach. I yell at the refs. I yell at the kids. Not even my kids. I'm talking to other people's kids. Like, hey, I yell at other people's parents. I mean, it's just so hard for me, especially because I have a, a pretty public job. You know, I'm on the Bible lab doing devotionals. I'm here at Eagle Brook Church. I speak, speak around. And so for some odd reason, I don't know why, I think at my son's game, I'm safe. Like nobody's going to recognize me at all. But I can't tell you how many times I've been yelling at a ref and a mom will walk up to me in Texas, okay, in Texas, and they'll say, we love your messages at Eagle Brook. Ma'am, I don't even know who you're talking about. What are you talking about? I'm not. What are, what are you saying? Aren't you the guy from the Bible app? I get that all the time. That's not me. Listen, I'm just trying to tell you, this rep is blind and he don't know what he's doing, you know? I mean, here, here, here's the deal. I don't know if you knew this, but when it comes to my anger and when it comes to yours, did you know that there's levels to it? Like, like level one is, is it's just mild irritation. Mild irritation. This is where we often find ourselves, uh, what's the word I want to use? Allergic. Okay, like you're allergic to certain individuals. Like these people, when you get around them, you just, you symptoms, you just start breaking out. It just, they just, they have the gift of getting on your last nerves. Okay, sometimes it's strangers, sometimes it's friends, sometimes it's kids, sometimes it's our parents, sometimes it's who we're dating, somebody that perhaps that we're married to. But Here's what I know. I, I can guarantee you this is going to happen this Thursday. There's going to be somebody that just mildly irritates us. Isn't that true? Like, don't look at anyone right now, okay? Don't make it weird, but I'm just letting you know. Like, there's somebody of some age, of, of some, on some level, that's going to mildly irritate you. But what happens when we're mildly irritated is we can move from that level to the next one which is level two, provoked frustration. This is where we can use the phrase, so-and-so made me mad. We were fine, and then somebody did something, said something, or posted something that provoked us. Your spouse left clothes on the floor. Your kids forgot to do their homework. A restaurant got your order wrong. For some, you were bullied. You were made fun of. 
There was an event that you and I can point to that just triggered a frustration in us that, if we're honest, made us angry. And at this level, you and I have a choice. We have a choice to make as to what we're going to do because we can't stop and, 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 just, and just spew out our anger at other people. But we do have the option to stay just at this level and just go, you know what, I, I realize that I, I was provoked, but, but what can happen with you and me is, well, we can go to the next level. And the next level is personal indignation. This is when you've taken something personal and now you're spewing it out on others. This is where a lot of us just snap. And what I know about you and what I know about me is that we all have unspoken rules, expectations, and preferences for the people in our world. We have a way we want the house clean and not just the house. Some of us can get rather granular with our cleaning expectations of specific rooms in the house. I mean, we all have a driving rubric that we think everyone should follow. When somebody don't drive like us, we immediately we start getting angry. The left is reserved for NASCAR drivers, and the right lane is reserved for minivans and Corollas. It's like, get out my way. What's even more insane about our driving rules for other vehicles is we will actually talk to people in other vehicles as if they could hear us. We're insane. <laughs> like, what's wrong with They can't hear us. The reality is, is that the people in our world are not always aware of those rules, expectations, or preferences. But let's just be honest. We definitely have them. And every now and then, when people break one of those rules, and when people don't meet one of those expectations, and when people don't behave in a way that lines up with our preferences, we take it personal, and we can just lose it. Might I submit a theory? I'm not sure people around us are aware of all of our unspoken rules. And it may be a little unfair because at this level, this is where you and I say things we could regret. And when we visit this level too often, we end up on the next one, which is level four. Level four is uncontrolled rage. Some of us have had a front row seat to what this looks like. I've played basketball with some guys who got mad at this level over one bad call. And I just stood there and I thought, you're not mad at the call. You're mad at something else. Because the call wasn't that bad. Hey, we all get angry. But we don't all throw coffee mugs and punch through walls. Hey, we all can lose our temper, but... We don't all put our hands on other people to a point of harming them, or dare I say, hospitalizing them. We don't all cuss people out to the degree of severing the most important relationships we have. Ladies and gentlemen, there's levels to this thing. And I'm not here to judge any of us because I realize that some of what I'm sharing right now for some of you, isn't based on a true story. For some of you, it's a daily reality. And for some of you, you feel like you work or live with, with, with what can feel like a monster. But that's my prayer today for this message. My prayer is that you and I would deal with the monster in us, perhaps dormant for some of us, perhaps damaging relationships for others of us. Our goal with anger would be to stop in the mild irritation or provoked frustration stage. Because the stages past that is when you and I start to hurt other people. The first thing I want us to do with our anger this 
weekend is number one. Uh, be honest about where you are with anger. When you look at the levels of anger, from mild irritation to provoked frustration to personal indignation to uncontrolled rage. We have to be honest about where we typically live on those levels because you and I cannot deal with red flags that we're not willing to be honest about. I love what 2 Corinthians 13 says. It says, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. I think for you and me, it takes great maturity on our journey of faith to admit to ourselves and to admit to God, hey, I think I've got some anger issues. And and here's the deal. Whenever I start having anger conversations, especially with people who consider themselves Christians, The first verse they bring up is this one. Hey, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. So Ryan, you know, anger is not a sin, right? I know. And and I I agree. But here's what you have to know about this (laughs) non-sin. With anger, it's not about where it's at. It's about where it leads to. And what it leads to is a sin that you and I regret, and we begin to hurt other people. Other Christians will say to me, but Ryan, the Bible talks about righteous anger as well. It does? Are you sure? Where? Because I looked. If you go to BibleGateway.com and search for the words righteous anger, you'll find those two words in the same paragraph but separate three to five times, depending on which version of the Bible you're searching. So that's not really a thing. Now, what you will find is you'll find God, the people of God, angry in a good, dare we say, righteous way when there's an injustice happening. Yeah, yeah, we'll see that. Like, did we see Jesus angry flipping tables in the temple? We sure did. And if that moment was captured on a cell phone, it would go viral in 2022 for sure. So I'll I'll give us that. There is such a thing as a righteous or good anger. There is a time where perhaps we need to get mad about some things. But let's just be honest about something for just one minute. We all think our anger is righteous. Isn't that true? Like we all think, yes, there's a bad anger and there's a good anger, but I got the good anger for sure. We all think our anger is justified. We all believe we have the right to be angry. And everyone else's anger is out of line or an overreaction. So allow me to go first. I'd love to believe the narrative that my anger is legit and, yes, righteous. (laughs) But if I'm honest, the things that make me the most angry are typically around people breaking my unspoken rules, expectations, and preferences. While there is good anger, I have to admit, I rarely have that kind. (laughs) What about you? You know that verse we just looked at about anger not being sin? What I want to encourage you with is what it says right after it. It says, and do not give the devil a foothold. Do not give the devil a foothold. My concern for some of us, is that it's not just a little anger issue. No, it has become a theme. It has become a foothold in your life. Here's how you know whether you've got anger issues or anger issues got you. The difference is when something makes you angry versus everything makes you angry. The difference is when somebody makes you angry versus everybody makes you me angry. I was at lunch with a guy and I brought up a mutual friend of ours just kind of having casual conversation and he went off about this mutual friend. I said, "Woo, okay, let me change the subject. Okay, he don't want to talk about him. That's not good. So I bring up somebody else. He goes off about him. I said, "Woo, I'm running out of people. I don't know, man. He might get mad at me next. I'm just trying to eat chicken Caesar salad, man. You need to calm down. I bring up a third person. He goes off again. At this point, I'm like, hey, man, I ain't, I, I ain't really got nothing else to say. And he, he felt the awkward silence. And this is what he says to me. He goes, you know, Ryan, I think I'm mad at everybody, aren't I? I 
I think so. I, I, I just hope I'm not next on the list. Because there are some people with their anger, they go on tour. They're angry with their boss on Monday, their spouse on Tuesday, their kids on Wednesday, a friend on social media on Thursday, a coworker on Friday. They take a break on Saturday, and then they're angry at the Vikings on Sunday, even when they're having the best season they've had in forever. But it just moves from person to person. And I believe what we've got to be honest about is whether or not we have anger or if anger has us. The second thing I want us to consider doing this weekend is extending the fuse on what gets us anger. What the Bible says a lot about anger is very realistic for you and for me. Because the Bible isn't one of those books that says, hey, you should never get angry. No, 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 no. What the Bible talks about as it pertains to anger is the speed in which you get there. I love what 1 Corinthians 13 says. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily Angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Psalms 19, verse 11 says this it says, Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. Sometimes my concern with our anger isn't that we got angry, my concern is how fast we got there. For some of us, it doesn't take much to come off the hinges. Some people wake up on 10. Okay, you got any friends like that? Like everybody's on strike two with them. They're waiting for you to say the wrong thing. Okay, like they're they looking for a fight. They're, they're just waiting for you to look at them the wrong way. I mean, like some of us, we just got a short fuse. We are easily angered by our kids. Because it's like they're constantly living with the compound interest of every disobedient and rebellious moment they've ever had. And it's like, this is the hundredth time I've told you. And, 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 and again, I wrote this message for me. All I would say to myself as a father of an eight-year-old and a three-year-old is I'm not sure that that's fair. How in the world? Are they supposed to live with unspoken rules that say, hey, I'm going to make you pay for repeated behavior so you get your act together or else? So then their one smart remark from me getting to level three, anger. Really? I think for you and I, man, we've got to extend our fuse. Here's what I want us to consider. Like, what's got us angry today might be be legit. But when we look back on what had us angry in the past, most of us laugh. Isn't that true? Like, I remember the very first fight me and my wife had. Okay, we're in this apartment, and I pull out this comforter, and I say, hey, can you help me with this black comforter? She goes, that comforter's not black, Ryan. I go, it's black. She goes, no, it's blue. And I got angry. I said, I cannot believe I married someone who is colorblind and this is going to be an issue. Like, what are we going to do? So we called in a referee. We FaceTime. We said, hey, um, I need you to tell us what color this comforter is. And they said, it's gray. You're both blind. I said, yo, I'm going to stop this right now, okay? <laughs> but we look back and we go, really? Like, is, that's what we were angry about, like arguing about the color of a comforter? Like it's silly now, but in the moment it was like, oh no, no, this, we're going to die on this hill right now. Here's what I've also discovered. Whenever I tell other people out loud what's got me angry, there's always a little bit in, in their voice on the phone, or I can see it in their eyes if we're having a conversation in person. And they've got this look on their face, they've got this tone on their voice that's just, that just has this little bit of a, really? Like, that's what's got you so angry. And when they repeat it back, it never sounds as angry as it did coming out of my mouth, okay? Like, because you could be talking to a friend and they're angry. Can you believe my boss said I could be working harder? 
Your boss said you could be working harder. You was playing PlayStation last night, like on the clock. Yeah, I think you could be working a little bit harder too. Actually, I think all of us could be working a little bit harder. You're, you might have a friend that calls you and says, man, I wanted to have sex last night and they didn't. So you wanted to have sex last night and they didn't? You mean you're like married or something? Congrats. That's awesome. you like, like, like somebody goes, man, they never texted me back. They never texted you back. They didn't like my photo. They didn't like your photo. My iPad's not charged. What are you, 12? Grow up. <laughs> my in-laws didn't say thank you. Your in-laws didn't say thank you. I mean, we're talking about the same thing, but it's like we're not talking about the same thing. That is what has you so angry, so fast. I'm not saying that any of that shouldn't make you angry. I'm just saying I think you and I should be slow to get there because some of us just, the smallest of things make us snap. I just think this holiday season, it should take a lot. For us to get there, my challenge for us this weekend, perhaps, is to say out loud some of the things that have us so upset. And it's not that it will go away, but perhaps it'll get a little smaller. When it comes to theological subjects, people can get angry quick. I love that at Eagle Brook, we say we have beliefs we'll die for, defend, or discuss. Now, what's interesting is, is that you and I live in a society that will put things in the die for category fast. And I'm just wondering if we can't move some of these hot topics, whether theological or political or economical, to the disgust category. I mean, there's certain people that are constantly dying on a hill. I'm like, can we get coffee and just talk about it for a minute? I didn't bring a sword to fight with you today, but I am hungry. Can we get something to eat and just talk? Here's the deal. There is somebody at your dinner table this week that's already on strike two with you. And perhaps you're just... You're just waiting for them to show up. And you're, they're, they're one not picked up plate away from you just blowing a gasket. And I just have to wonder what it would look like for you and for me to just say, you know what? Why don't I just extend the fuse a little bit? I'm not saying your relatives and friends this week shouldn't make you angry. I'm saying it shouldn't be easy, so easy. For you to get there. The last thing that I want to encourage us to do this weekend with our anger is number three, take our anger to the right places. Because some of us, we take them to all the wrong places. When it comes to anger, our greatest temptation is to take it out on someone else instead of truly considering who or what is actually making us angry. Sometimes we're frustrated with people at work and we take it out on the people in our home. Sometimes we're frustrated at the people in our home or frustrated in our marriage and we take it out on people at our job. Sometimes we're angry about politics. I spoke to a Democrat and Republican this week who were both upset about the outcomes of the elections across the country. And here's the deal. I'm going, guys, why are you mad at me? One lived in Indiana. The other one lived in Nevada. I live in Texas. I ain't do nothing to you. Don't get mad at me. I had nothing to do with that. But isn't it interesting how it can like affect our mood, and here's the deal, like, if, if you don't like where politics are, right, get that vote. Write a letter to your senator or run for office yourself. But don't surrender your emotional well-being all November at your job or in your home. That's misplaced anger. That's us taking our anger to the wrong place. I think anger is similar to a warning light on a car. We see the warning light. But there's something under the hood that is causing that light to be on. And maybe we can see somebody else that's angry. But what I think you and I have to realize 
is that under the hood, there could be a constant fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, and all of those things can lead them and lead us to displaying anger. And so I think all of us have to examine, why are we really mad? I mean, have you ever been in a meeting with someone who was mad before the meeting even started? You're thinking, why are you mad? What did we do to you? It's 8 a.m. on a Monday. We haven't even had time to make you mad. You're pre-mad. Why are you mad? Here's, here's what I believe. I, I think there's two places you should consider taking your anger. Number one, to a good therapist. And secondly, to God. Personally, I suggest both. I, I went to a counseling session this past week, and I just got to tell you, it was awesome. I have a new book coming out in a few weeks, and there's just so many moving parts that are incredibly frustrating. And I could go on a tangent right now for an hour, but I'll spare you my author's struggles. But I realized a couple of weeks ago, the common denominator of everything that's frustrating me and yes, got me angered. The common denominator is me. And so I, I had to sit with somebody to go, man, I got I to gotta deal with some things in, in me. And, and I noticed that I, that part of just being irritated by the process, I started taking it out on people that I love through just like sarcastic, smart remarks, having a short fuse. And my kids could just tell, man, dad's, dad's not dad right now. And for me, I had to go, man, that, that's, that's, that's not on a publisher. That's not on a system. That's not, a, no, that's, that's on me. So I had to call time out for myself and sit with someone who could just let me rant and then bring me back to earth a little bit. Because at the end of the day, you and I cannot make the world our punching bag. Whether it's a counselor, a trusted advisor that you can sit with, or a pastor, I think we all need to process our anger in the right place. Now, while people, advisors, mentors, counselors, and pastors are phenomenal for this, there's nobody like Jesus. Whether you're a Christian or not, I just want to submit to you the idea that taking our anger to God is a better plan than taking it out on somebody else. It's better for your soul, and I think it's better for your relationships, too. I mean, I have a friend who just found out that his wife is pregnant with twins, and, and it's just been a challenging time for them. And she's been in the hospital for the past couple of weeks, and I called him a couple of days ago, and I just said, hey, how's your soul? How are you? I know you're trying to manage the one kid and bring the daughter to the hospital to see mom, and it's just it's frustrating. It's can make you angry. And you know what he said to me? I'll never, I'll never forget this moment. He said, he said, Ryan, I've been praying a lot of angry prayers this week. And I thought, that's the right place to take it. Because God can handle it. it God can handle that deep frustration that you have. It's the right place to take it. And God's track record with handling people with anger issues is immaculate. Like, if, you, if you're here today and you got anger issues, listen, just open the Bible. I promise you, you're going to find some people that got some anger issues that God still used in a mighty way. One of those people is Peter. Like, Peter is a guy. He's a disciple of Jesus. He followed Jesus for three and a half years. He saw miracles, signs, wonders, and learned the way of Jesus. Also, what you need to know about Peter is there's only two people in human history to walk on water, Jesus and Peter, okay? However, there's this moment in the Gospel of Luke where Jesus is betrayed by another disciple. 
and he's about to be arrested. He's about to be crucified. And in this moment, you would think that Peter would act like Jesus. You would think that Peter would love his enemies or pray for them. Nah, that ain't what happened. Luke 22 tells us this. It says, when Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And now watch this. You got to be careful. This is what Luke says about the story. He says, and one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. If you're reading Luke for the first time, and you've not read anything else. It's like, oh, one of them, whoever that one might be, but. The Gospel of John, chapter 18, says, Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. Luke's like, I don't know who it is. I don't want to say no name. John's like, it's Peter. Okay, don't give me that. It rhymed with Teeter. No, no, no. It's Peter. Let me tell you who the gangster is. It is Peter. Okay? And I absolutely love it. Like, this dude, what I love about Peter is he's relatable. I mean, he's Jesus' right-hand man. Like, this is the guy that's supposed to have it together. This is the guy that is supposed to have turning the other cheek down pat. I mean, he's walked on water. But what I love about him is that he's a Jesus follower, but he'll still cut you. You know what I'm saying? Like, this dude, like, hey, man, like, you know, there's some Christians that are like, I love Jesus but I still knock you out. Like, I'm saved, but barely. Like, I kind of go to church sometimes. Like, I'm saved, but God's still working on me. And I just, and and, and, and you got to see how Jesus responds. You have to see what Jesus did with a man who had a moment where he just lost his cool. Luke 22, verse 51, it says, but Jesus answered, no more of this. My bad, y'all. My crew's out of control. He says, "And, and he touched the man's ear and healed him. Isn't it amazing that you can walk on water one day and be ready to rip somebody's head off the next? That's us. Singing worship songs in church one day and cussing out our colleague by Monday afternoon. That's us, but this is Jesus cleaning up our mess. Like if you're here today, or watching from wherever you are, and you've got some anger issues, like me, <laughs> like Peter. <laughs> Welcome to the boat of people who can admit they need a savior, who can calm us down and clean up our mess. Before you go through a chaotic holiday season with family, friends, and colleagues, I think you and I should pause this weekend and pause this week and wrestle with what gets us so easily angered and go to a heavenly father and say, God, I might have some angry prayers today. And before they arrive at your house and before you go to theirs, I think what you and I should do is we should take a hard look in the mirror and pray to God. Say, Lord, is there anything in me that I need to hand over to you? Could it be control? Could it be that for the next week, you and I need to lay down some of our unspoken rules, expectations, and preferences so that we're not triggered into level three or level four kind of anger? Or perhaps should we make those unspoken rules spoken? Should we have some pre-Thanksgiving conversations about our expectations and preferences so that we're not harboring anger while passing mashed potatoes? Here you go. Like, we don't want to be that. (laughs) What I know to be true is that our life rarely, if ever, gets better when we are angry. Every single minute that we are angry, we lose a minute of joy a minute of peace, or a minute where we could make a difference in the life of someone else. I know we have a list of things we wish everyone would change before Thursday and all the things they should be doing and should have been been done by now. But my challenge for us today 
is to look at our own red flags and be the kind of person that others look forward to being around this holiday season. Father, I thank you so much for Eagle Brook Church. I pray, God, that we would take a hard look in the mirror at some of the red flags that can pop up in our life. God, I pray that we would wrestle to the ground some of the things that have us angry. And God, I pray that we would take that to you. God, I pray that you would give us the ability this week with family, friends, and colleagues to extend that fuse. May we be the people that are not easily angered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy holidays. We'll see you next weekend.